When Vicki found out that Diane and I were living together and in a relationship, she tracked us down to our new apartment. When I opened the door and I saw Vicki and Diane's ex-boyfriend, I thought they were there to start trouble. I had my handgun in the apartment at that time, but it was locked up. We were not expecting her to show up. Hey, stranger. Thought you might like to meet my friend. Hi, Diane. Who are you? He's my ex. Are you following me? I started screaming at both. I said, you get the hell out of here. You have no reason to be here. I'm sick of being threatened by you. She said, well, good to see your balls have dropped. Just get rid of them, Vern, please. Diane was terrified of her boyfriend. Call cops, go! She ran into the back of the apartment and hid. And the police were called, the police showed up. Basically, they just told me to take a walk. Get out, just get away from it. Get away from the situation, get away now. Uh, can't you do something? I mean, this is trespassing, right? So if she was going to kill me, fine. I don't know how she was going to do it. They are dangerous. And I said, if anything ever happens to me, you know damn well who it will have been. I thought it was me she was going to go after. I had no idea what was coming. The morning of September 9th, 1999, I left that morning around quarter to seven in the morning. Uh, the plan was to be back there around 11 o'clock to pick her up because I had to make a, a road trip up to the Sun Valley, Idaho area. And uh, Diane and Jade were going to come with me that day. When I first tried to call her to give her the heads up that I was on my way, Jade picked up the phone. She answered the phone, and I says, hi, Jade. How you, how you doing? Let me talk to your mom. And when um, she said, well, mom is asleep. I said, well, can you wake her up? And I said, no. She said, no, mommy's asleep. And she's got purple lipstick or blue lipstick on. I had no idea what that meant. I mean, she was just a little kid at the time. I didn't think anything of it. I said, well, tell her I'm coming home so she can get, get ready and get dressed, because I'll be there in just a little bit so we can go. OK. And she hung up. When I got home, Jade was watching TV. And she just told me again, she said, Mommy has blue lipstick on, purple lipstick on. And um, so I went in and <sighs> sorry. This is harder than I thought. I walked into the bedroom. Diane was laying on her stomach. I went to shake her. I said, honey, we got to get going. She was so cold. <laughs> she was cold. Diane first died, the police were telling me that she had passed away from uh, a methamphetamine overdose. And I thought, that's impossible. She didn't use drugs. I know that. They said that they found methamphetamine and marijuana in her purse. I said, there's no way. There's no way. I, I, we'd only been living together for a short period of time, but I knew she didn't use drugs. You said that you were going through a divorce now. Mm -hmm. Who are you getting divorced from? Vicki, Arlene, Jensen. In my initial interview, I knew it was Vicky. I told them that. I said, Vicky did this because she tried to do it to my ex-wife. Vicky's crazy. She's psychopathic. She's been doing drive driving by. She drove by two nights ago with somebody in the van, showing them where we live. She had been so aggressive with trying to pursue me, and I just I just knew she had something to do with it. Diane was worried about Vicky stalking us, and she said, Vicky's going to try one more thing, do one more thing to try and break us up. I look broken, destroyed. 
I'm looking at that younger version of myself, and I can tell you what he feels. He feels, he knows that Vicky did it, and he feels like he's responsible. She hated Diane. She called, used to call Diane a slut, or you know, but <clears throat> Diane was my soulmate. Diane was, she loved me. I loved her. But we're right in the middle of a horror triangle, aren't we? Vicky called me on my cell phone. And she said something to the effect that, oh my gosh, I heard something had happened to Diane. I can't believe it happened, and I'm so sorry about this. And I just, I said, Vicky, I know you had something to do with this, and I hope you rot in hell for what you've done. And I hung up on her. I moved out of the apartment. I don't know how she found me, but she showed up at my doorstep again. She said she wanted to talk to me. So I said, fine, let's go for a drive. Got in her car and she drove to a church parking lot. I always had my gun with me, always had it with me. But I was nervous. What are we doing here, Vicki? She said I just needed to come home to her, that I'd need to get over this, and that I was hers, and I belonged with her. I know you're sad, but it's time to move on. She looked different. I, I, I don't know how to explain it. It was like her eyes were empty, if that makes sense. You're meant to be with me. Vicki, I'm not doing this anymore. And so I told her, I'm not going back with her. She didn't even really look at me. I mean, she just looked forward and said, so we're really done. This is really over. She was quiet. Scary, because that was something that was different. She'd never been that way before. She'd never really been quiet. And I'm feeling to make sure I got my gun. And she said, OK. I just wanted to make sure. When I saw her that last time, I still knew that she had something to do with it. That My conviction of that hadn't changed any. It was February 2000, about six months after the murder, that we found out what really happened. The phone rang, and I picked it up. It was my former sister-in-law. Hello. And she said, I just wanted to let you know that Vicky has been arrested for Diane's murder. And I hear the details of what she had done, what Vicky had done to Diane. <laughs> and we take a break for a minute, please. This is obviously a serious charge. You know, I didn't get any bigger than this. <laughs> um, a lot of what happens to you hinges on how honest you are. Vicky killed Diane. Autumn, her brother's daughter, was involved. And Autumn's boyfriend, Matt Pearson. She had waited for me to leave for work. After I had left, Autumn went up to the door and knocked on the door. Autumn said, hey, my boyfriend has just beat me up, and I need to use your phone to call the police. And then Autumn pulled a handgun out. We have information that you and a couple of other people went over to Anita Ray's house and that you had some uh, fentanyl and that uh, she was injected and that that was the cause of her death. They held Diane down and Vicky injected her with a whole bunch of insulin and 
injected her with methamphetamine. And the whole time, Diane was screaming. And Vicky said, I don't care, bitch, you're going to die. I know that you, you injected her. And I know that you guys put her on the bed and waited for it to take effect. I know that. Diane wasn't dying fast enough for Vicky. <laughs> so she put the pillow over her face, finished the job. Then she wanted to kill the four-year-old girl. Someone spoke up, Otter or Matt spoke up and wouldn't allow it. They wouldn't go along with it, so they didn't. Otter's already told me everything, sweetheart. Everything. Vicky, Autumn, and Matt were caught, I guess, thanks to Autumn. Autumn was in high school still. She was only 15 at the time. And she had a friend. And apparently, the friend was not getting along with a stepfather. And Autumn had told the friend that, hey, I can help you out. And my Aunt Vicky and I, we got a way of taking care of people. Then we won't get caught. She goes, well, how do you know you're not going to get caught? Because she, and then she said, because we've done it before. And how we caught wind of it is this friend then contacted us and said, look, this is something I can't live with. The gig is up. I know that you killed her. From here on is, is going to determine probably the rest of your life. They had rehearsed it the night before. They had practiced what they were going to do to Diane. How much more heinous and premeditated does it get? What I need you to do is be upfront and be honest with me and tell me what happened. That I don't know anything about it. I'm, I'm telling you the honest truth. I don't know anything about it. Lying sack of crap. Look at that. Lying sack of garbage. She knew what she'd done. She knew damn well what she had done. I think I wasn't That's probably a good idea. You're going to be charged. Um, and we're going to talk with the, uh, the prosecutor now. You're going to be charged with murder. I, I have to say it, it does give me a sort of sense of sick satisfaction, I guess, to see her squirm. Because for once, she was the one that didn't have the control. So smug. Bet she isn't too smug now.